Welcome back, Hunters. I'm the Survival Vis, and we return to Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Where we gotta see what we wanna do, because we finally unlocked a lot more options for this level of quest in G rank. Like, we've got Devil Joe as an option, Legiacris, Stygian, Ignactor. I'm kind of tempted. I think what I might actually start with is either Legiacris or Ignactor. You know what? Let's go with Legiacris. I completely forgot we hadn't actually gone after him yet. So this will be a good way of trying to just get him shown off in his G-Rank form. I actually don't know what to expect from G-Rank form. It's, I don't remember fighting Legiacris a lot in G-Rank. I don't know if he really gave super good equipment or not, so... This will be an interesting hunt for sure. But yeah, I can't believe I forgot about him when I was trying to think of all the monsters we still hadn't done in G-Rank. So then we'll take him down. This should hopefully unlock Ivory Legiacris. Then it's going to be uh, another fight in itself. I just want to check, though. Ooh, we got a minus 25 Thunder Resistance. That's... He's going to hit pretty hard in these quests, so we got to be very careful. Like, we have the Evade Extender and the Evasion Plus 2, but even those still might not really... I basically have to be much more careful. I can't be quite as stupid as I have been on like some other things I've done. So Loggy is... Okay, actually, probably Fastway is going to be through base camp, then through the special exit in the Flood Forest. Actually, it reminds me, I should check in Rise if there is still, like, this back way. I know the Sandy Plains in Rise actually have, like, a little nod to these... Ah, uh, like, secret passage areas that would get you to other parts of the map faster. You know, let's reload, reload down here. Ah, uh, first recording of the day, you can sh see that I'm kind of, uh, fresh into it, aren't I? Uh, oh. He's not here. Huh. Okay, he's gotta be in one of these underwater areas, though. Regular Legiacris is basically completely waterlogged until he runs out of stamina. He will not go on land for anything else, whereas... Irie is the complete opposite of that. There's the big gator. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out how the Evasion Plus 2 is gonna work underwater. I know I tried using it against, uh, Goldbeard's Deus. I don't think I had the best results with it. So the Evade Extender is probably gonna be our saving grace under here. Well, in here. Another thing about Loggy, too, is that he doesn't have the greatest, like, uh, hit zones for gunners. Like, so far, he's very tame for a fight, but then he's not enraged at all. It's always once the G-Rank monsters go into enrage, they step themselves up a lot. Speaking of... Okay, big guy. What can you do? You can push me into the other zone, that'll definitely be something. But I'll take it for the little bit of a uh, heal here. And let's see. Yeah, the shoulder check is what I'm incredibly worried about with G-Rank Loggy. Like, it can be such a hard move just to figure out where to position and, like, get out of the way for it. And the attacks hit pretty hard, even just the standard ones. Okay, let's be careful. There we go, and top yourselves up again. I think the big thing for Legiacris is going to be learning to dodge up and down much more often. Oh, like, yeah, see, the first one you can dodge, but that second one is brutal back in these games. This is one of the areas where you can feel how underwater could be really hard to hunt with. Like, 
even that. God. I think this is where everybody complains about underwater hunts more. Not so much the other ones, but because of how just like dangerous and hard the monsters can be to dodge. Like, I have the evade extension on this set. And that those attacks can still like get through no problem to you. Kiamba. Okay, well at least there's a little bit of an opening, a little bit of an opening if I don't screw it up. Oh yeah, I should try dodging back on that one. Probably going to be hearing me a lot. I should have done this. I should have done that. This hunt. Like, even that little swipe. Oh. Okay, I think we just got out of that one. Just that little claw swipe can be dangerous because it like cuts off the natural regeneration. So it you you don't really like gain anything back being able to avoid some of the attacks. I think Loggy's going to be one of the g rank monsters. We'll see how the fight goes, but I might look at capturing him more than just, like, outright hunting. There we go. Yeah, nice to see that part break. And let's get ourselves the Pierce Ones ready again. And then we'll head back in to continue the hunt. I can't remember what his armor's like in G-Rank. I know it almost has, like, Pirate Captain vibe for its looks, but I can't remember the skills on it. I don't know if it's just, like, a continuation or, like, bringing forward of everything. Yeah, you, like, almost have to go for where the head is on that one. But when you have a weapon out, your dodges are not really all that great. Alright, oxygen. That's sort of a thing I should be remembering because I've done some recordings with some Nautica Blow Zero, but uh. Oh, where is he? Oh, there he is. Like, that's one area of underwater hunts where I think they did it right. You don't need to make it so that way you have to refill your oxygen very often. Oh lord, I am doing terrible for like a. I can get these shots off, or get these quick shots I used to be able to pull. Okay, at least the V extender helps for things like that. And then these are no problem just to get out of the way of. What are you doing now? Okay, just the charge in. There's another nice park break. Okay, so we got the chest and the horns. I wouldn't mind trying to break the back, but I can't. I can't remember if this generation had him that only fire element would break it, or... No, I don't think you need just that. I think it's just that it's a very sturdy park. Oh. Okay, well, at least there's the claws broken, so we got another park break. I'm hoping because of the Blazooka just being the powerhouse it is, we won't have too much trouble trying to break those uh, shockers off him. Because aside from his head, Loggy doesn't have any other real, uh, like, weak zones to be aiming for as a gunner. Okay, glad I kind of sheathed the weapon away there.
And I guess he doesn't really get any new moves in G-Rank, it's just that his moveset is kind of more potent. Okay, so we're out of Pierce 1s, or will be again soon. Might as well just try to... Oh, that is... Again, I gotta remember to dive up and down. Uh-oh. Okay, thankfully... Oh, this... Okay, I really gotta figure out this control. It's really being a pain in the rear when it... When it decides to just randomly change the lock on. Actually... I mean, for as much as we were getting a bit beaten around and I have gone through a lot of healing, we're still staying alive. We haven't gotten a cart yet, which is good. It's once you start getting the carts that you can start feeling more frustrated because of how... Especially as bow gunners, because you have to use so much ammo on some hunts, it feels like you're kind of more at a loss if you don't get it down. Whereas for Blade Masters, it's not really that big of a deal. Because you're not really out anything besides the bit of money you kind of put in for the quest. Gunners, though, you gotta restock everything. If you combine materials, you gotta buy all that again. It's expensive being a gunner in Monster Hunter. Seems like he's calmed down, although that'll probably change quickly. Yeah, I'm being kind of dumb here, but no, once he enrages, I probably will uh, go and heal myself up. Ooh, that's nice. I mean, one of the things that's nice about the Diablo Zooka is it doesn't rely on, like, affinity or mortal zones for a lot of its damage. It is just such a powerhouse of a heavy bow gun. It's like, it's cracked over the 500 mark for how much, uh, attack value it has. It's, I think, 523. Oh, crap. Oh, thank God for that, uh, health recovery we got from Kyamba. Otherwise, that would have been our card. That one is just... It's such a hard move to figure out what you can do to dodge him because of how much area it covers and how he repositions himself. Like, you can dodge up and down, but even then, you're kind of not used to being able to do that. I think that's one of the big things about... Ultimate is trying to just remember this is a 3D environment when you're underwater. That's actually something I feel like Rise, it's not quite 3D, it's more like 2D with a hop that can get you out of the situation. Like here, this is truly a full 3D hunt where up, down, left, right, forward, back, you have to deal kind of with every direction here. But Rise, though, a lot of it can just be, like, 2D, and then you use the wire bugs just almost, like, to hop out of that to, like, an escape more than you're actually that involved in it. Well, except maybe for Insect Glaive, but, I mean, come on, that's Insect Glaive's entire thing, is having the aerial stuff. Actually, maybe that's why we haven't seen uh, Generations Ultimate come back. Insect Glaive would probably lose a lot, or, no, what was I saying? I probably screwed that up, but why we haven't seen Underwater Combat come back. How would you do Insect Glaive underwater? Like, think about that. You lose all your aerial stuff, so you can't, like, vault around. Your Kinsect could probably still do what... There we go. Okay, that was good to see break off. The Kinsect could still do what it's going to do. But, like, how would you make a moveset for Insect Glaive, given, like, what it has against it now? Oh, crap. Oh, we actually managed to somehow avoid getting that hit. Maybe that's why underwater combat hasn't come back, is 
how do you implement anything for, like, uh, that kind of weapon? You're still not even limping yet, are you? No, you're just, you're just chilling and cruising around. I'm, maybe that'd be a good brainstorming video. Maybe that's what we gotta pitch to all the Monster Hunter guys who kind of, like, have a lot of these bigger channels or that. Get a discussion going, how could you make Insect Lave work underwater? Because you would really dampen its toolkit a lot. Like, every other weapon, well, as 3 Ultimate has shown, would be okay underwater. There are probably some improvements here or there of certain attacks, but, I mean, it all mostly works out. Charge Blade would be no problem underwater, but Insect Blade, because of its aerial stuff, yeah, I don't know how you could ever, like, get that to work, unless maybe you make it... I mean, you could try making it almost like it's a uh, giant paddle, so you get extra mobility compared to every other weapon type. And then just have, like, a moveset that really promotes your, like, mobility instead of, like, how the other weapons are. Just, like, are underwater. Yeah, gotta be careful. He's enraged. Healing is running out. Ooh. Thank you, Evasion 2. I still don't know your timing underwater, but you are coming in in the clutch for a lot of these. And then we get this attack. I kind of wish because of just, like, how much it covers, it almost had, like, one of those forced, uh, cooldown animations to it. Where Loggy would, like, stop and do a few chomps in the water, and then he'd do his next... Oh, come on, you are just spamming that move now. At least we dodged that one rather well. Okay, Loggy, stop! Stop, that's just cheap. Yeah, I'm giving you some extra beating just because that was very cheap spamming that attack at us there. Man, not a very cooperative monster, was he, at the end? We'll go, we'll let him, uh, go up, sleep, and then we'll go and capture him. Just because, again, ammo is, I mean, it's not doing too bad. That's one of the things, I mean, I got a comment quite a while ago, why do I bring so much ammo? Because you never know exactly how much you need per monster. The light bow gun really taught me a lot of lessons from the ultimate that have carried me through the entire series. One of them was, even if you don't use the ammo type that often, still bring it. Because in the clutch, you want anything that's better than normal one. Normal one ain't so good. And it's better to have options than to not have them at all. There you are. Yeah, we're just going to capture you. Yeah, maybe we'll get lucky and get one of your mantles. I know if we want to upgrade the Arc Precursor, we're going to need a Logiacris mantle. There we go. Logiacris captured. I mean, hunted, captured. Close well, the same thing. Yeah, it's hard to tell how big he was. He seems like a decent size, but I don't think he's going to be like a crown size. He didn't strike me as being that super large, but we'll see as we go through the uh, quest wrap-up. But this should unlock Ivory, and Ivory, I'm actually... I'm worried about each of these Legiacris for different things. This guy was underwater. Ivory is going to be because of that, like, arcing lightning ball attack. That thing was brutal and high rank. I can't imagine G-Rank, and if he actually... Like, there's something about the attack in high rank, I don't know if it's carried over or not, but if you basically stay to one side of Ivory Legiacris, you're a lot safer than on the other side. Because how he would do that, like, uh, almost like Crescent Moon attack, it's actually more like a Half Moon, because it basically... He winds up here, you're safe in this entire area, and then it's the flyover. You'll see next... Probably next episode, because I have to imagine we'll get Legai or we'll unlock Ivory next. Yeah, so we got some Deathly Shockers, those are helpful.
Another monster taken down. Oh, did you get anything good for us, Cha-Cha? Sometimes you get very lucky and Cha-Cha can actually, like, uh, steal the rarest material, like the mantles from monsters. So I def- that's why I keep him as, like, that. Okay, yeah, so we do have Ivory next. Okay, that'll be next episode. That's why I keep Chacha in that mask, even though it's kind of annoying. It, If you actually manage to get a mantle from him, it outweighs a lot of the negatives from him. Okay, armor craft-wise. Yeah, there's the guy, Croset. You can't really see it from this one. But it gives... Okay, it's definitely a bow set because of that uh, fast charge to it. Oh, actually, bow and light bow gun. It's kind of interesting that they had... Like, if you do have fast charge, you have something else to kind of offset it. Rise didn't do that at all. Rise is actually stuck much more to this armor is made specifically for this weapon. Like, you see that with anything that has, like, the rabbit morph or the load shells. But, yeah, as for... Oh, I actually don't have the loggy head to show off. Huh, I wonder why I need to unlock that. Yeah, I don't like the arm thing here. Like, to me, the arm thing just kind of looks weird from what it could have been. I mean, the Tenderizer's not bad to have because of the affinity boost and give, but I think I'm definitely sick with the Narga set. It's just been super handy to have. I gotta see, what do I need to upgrade? The... Okay, I need a Logiacra Sapphire, which is a bit surprising, but maybe we'll get that in G rank. At least the rare materials get easier to get in the higher ranks you go. It's so, like, if you need a Loggy Sapphire, you're gonna have an easier time farming G rank Logiacras to get that. And let's take out everything we... Oh, okay, I do have another sack of potions. You know, just stock up this episode, the next one we can go right into the hunt, and we'll see how we fare. And gotta go all the way. There's my bird wyvern fangs. Okay. Yeah, so Chris, he was... If he spams the shoulder checks, he's a very annoying fight underwater. But if he doesn't do that, he's manageable, at least. The only advice I can really give for those, and I didn't even take it at all, was to dive up and down and try to get back into the hang of things there. Going back and forth between Rise and 3 Ultimate, I completely forget that's what you can do in this game. But we're going to end things off here. Thank you guys very much for joining me on this episode of the series. If you did like the video, be sure to give a like, and if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to leave everything in the comments right down below. And until I catch you all in the next video, though, hunters and survivors, please remember, as always, to take care, stay alive, and happy hunting!